Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your host, Calder Ness. This episode, we're going to be chatting a little bit about the world of Hero Clicks, but most importantly, our favorite Hero Clicks figures of all time. This episode 521, Howdy Howdy, Let's Get Rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks now. I have the high ground. Oh, yeah, you really have the high ground. It's over, Simeon. Yeah. Instant deadpan. Oh, how how do you six people you think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. To be able to make that out. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make hero clips like that forever. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. If you want to get clicks straight from the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com. Use code DIALH10, D-I-A-L-H, that's the letter H, 10 one zero for 10% off your Hero Hooks order. There only works on in-stock items, no pre-orders, no iconics, uh, no specialty stuff, no promos, no bundles, anything like that. Jeremy, like always in the studio, is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, you know, just had a decent day today. Like, surprisingly good weather and stuff. Yeah. Not the just, rest of the week, though. No, it was nice. We hit the 90s. We're finally. Oof. We, were, we were tickling it. We were... Uh, approaching the big 90 but uh this week we are definitively hitting it i don't want to hit the 90s simeon no. i don't want to i don't want to be i want to no. stay in the mid 70s forever yeah but sadly Ugh. we must uh we must enter the vortex that is summer it is, wave it is what it is we got to get in there sadly sooner rather than later i guess so ah is that just making you happy? Just the weather being super nice today? Classic. A simian staple. Uh, you, you know, weather was nice today. That would have made me happy, but uh, I had uh, some bodily issues that were encumbering Oof. me the whole day. So hmm. <laughs> external hip snapping is a problem that I deal with. Yeah. Uh, it's reoccurring because of my job, the way like I have to move and climb and stuff. Um so that was like acting up. So like one leg's just like, I really don't want to lift you. And it's like, yep, mm. okay. Uh, so that that didn't make it great. But other than that, it was a pretty solid day. Uh, no, what made me happy this week? I got to play some hero clicks for what feels like, and I'm not I'm not gonna actually go back and look because it's sad. But I played hero clicks for the first time in at least a month, maybe more. That's the way um, it goes. Yeah, I've been organizing a lot of hero clicks. I've been gathering a bunch of stuff. The fact that X of Swords is probably going to be on the next like rotation and I still have not like organized and boxed up my X of Swords stuff is wild to me. I've got Oof. Avengers Forever that's not back boxed up, Avengers 60th that's not boxed up. It's just like it's crazy to me like how far behind I've gotten on organizing all of like my hero clicks lately. But um no, I've made a little bit of progress. That's been nice. And I've been able to uh, sell off some like random bits and bobs here and there. So that's also always a good thing, getting rid of like the duplicates and stuff like that. Mm, absolutely. There's definitely where it's like you look in your extras box or you're looking at like just boosters in the plastic shell and you're like, oh, I got to go through that brick still. Like actually, ugh, take the cards out of the little plastic and add yeah. these figures my collection properly what it's like i and just yeah ordered like 20 of uh f from x of swords the like um white chapel lady i don't know the white priestess oh gaia okay yeah something or whatever like her name I don't, is yeah. something like that yeah i ordered like a ton of the generics from x of swords and i'm just now getting to like putting them away and i'm like i've never played any of these especially the Oof. fury the fury i'm like i'll never play this because shortly after we had the fury i mean it felt like shortly after we got notorious where they introduced the 15 point goon and uh suddenly all generics have to be measured against the goon and Facts. sadly most of them are lacking yeah so 
I have a bunch of generics that I don't want anymore because can't goons step up are to cool. the goon. Yeah. Sorry, the goon just edges out every other generic from the equation. What can I say? It's just the goon. We're in the goon. We're in our goon era. Heroclix is in their goon era right now, and if you're a generic, if you got that real name Various, you're gonna be compared. I'm sorry. It's just that's just the way it goes. Yeah, it's just facts. Right on. Uh, what made me happy this week, and I do just mean body shaking, compulsory, every fiber in my being cannot wait until 2025, and that is, uh, we saw the trailer and a bunch of promo images for Doom Dark Ages, oh, yeah. and I was just shot back to March 20th, 2020, where I buy Doom from GameStop on the verge of, you know, the things that were happening in March 20th of 2020, and I the world fades away in the background, and I just rip and tear until it is done playing Doom for just what feels like basically months of my life, probably because they were at that point in time, uh, and I just loved it. And seeing the new stuff for Dark Ages, oh my gosh. I'm so ready. We're doing like the origin story of the Slayer. Everything has this darker, more gray feeling. The monsters look kind of like grittier and more realistic than they did in Eternal. They look like oh, just nasty, almost sickly. And they're throwing out not plasma blasts or whatever, but they're shooting lost souls at you, which are flaming skulls. Like that's the projectile. That's just metal. The Doom Slayer, we, we get to see several new weapons. Dude, most importantly, he has a shield. I don't know who at Bethesda was like, I know exactly what we need in this game, and it is going to make one player marginally more happy than anyone else, and that is we have to give the Doom Slayer a shield. And he's got a freaking round shield, and it's also a chainsaw. He It has a ripcord, and now it just has chainsaw blades on the surrounding of the shield, and you can throw it, and it can come back to you? Oh my gosh! How is it a Doom game? In first person, that has finally given me a Captain America-esque shield throw <laughs> come back to me mechanic. Are you kidding me? And it's going to come out in 2025? Like, oh my, I'm just, I'm so ready. Oh, I am so ready to be Captain America with a shotgun in the Dark Ages killing demons. I, I literally cannot wait from this point until it comes out in 2025, whenever that may be. It's... Toot toot, all aboard the hype train. There's only one thing I care about, and that is playing Doom Dark Ages. Oh my gosh. I I was like, don't get too excited on the podcast, but I've kind of gotten myself excited. I, I literally cannot wait. It's the only thing that matters. It's yeah. going to be so sick. I'm Ugh. I'm just waiting to see how long it takes you to say, like, this is my boomstick while playing. It's oh instantly as soon as uh, as soon as you finally get the super shotgun it's yeah it's the groovy yeah this is my bloom stick versus <laughs> evil dead uh and then yeah yo shout out evil dead rewatched evil dead 2 with commentary this weekend as well always a treat always a nice little treat what can i say but yeah that's what made me happy it was a good it was a great week for just the dopest game in video games ever IMO, IMO, uh, to get like a sequel, and I'm one million percent here for it. I literally, I just literally cannot wait, teeming with excitement. So, but ladies and gentlemen, this week we're going through. I'm gonna loosely say, like every hero click set. I'm not gonna lie, I skipped quite a few. Um, but for the most part, big booster releases hero click set, and we're just gonna kind of talk about our favorite figures. From those sets, it was kind of a dry news week this week, and this is kind of a segment uh, I've wanted to do for a really long time because I think it's really fun. So we're just going to kind of go back, come with us, ladies and gentlemen, in the way back machine to 2002. Is that pro is that probably yeah? Is that it? Is that the first? Yeah, yeah. take come back to 2002. All the way back in 2002, there were no cards. Maps were so big back then. Look at you. Look at you, boy. You're so big. You've grown. You've grown so much and started off so big. Look at you. Uh, and 
and I'm not going to lie, I'm actually, I'm skipping a lot of stuff until we get to a set that has a character I ever used anything from. But the very first Hero Click set is Infinity Challenge. I don't know if you have a favorite figure from this set I or do. not. I mean, you do? Um, Perfect. There's, so like, Infinity Challenge is obviously for these first, gosh, I don't know, 50 sets. Uh, it's REV. And so a lot of times you're either talking about something that's a very cheap version of something or something that's the like veteran version of something. So like Infinity Challenge, you've got like a 14 attack Ultron, which is like kind of wild. Like, you know, you got Fire Lord, kind of wild, like certain stuff like that. Uh, the thing that I really care about from this set, and it's not Thanos. No one cares about Thanos from this set. Uh, <laughs> no, it's the 149... Wow. Wolverine. So this is okay. a black black suit Wolverine with a sword in hand. He's like an all black, no mask, and he is a eight speed stealth twelve attack blades, sixteen defense with toughness and two damage for sixty four points, which arguably still decent in like a casual setting. Um, I mean yeah. That twelve with blades, that's pretty legit. Yeah, I mean, he goes down real hard, obviously. Like, 16 defense is not great, and, like, it only gets worse back in these sets. But, yeah, I, I really like this one. This is one of the ones that, like, is kind of, like, on my uh, Hall of Fame of, like, things to collect at some point. Yeah. I just haven't looked for one because I, I don't care that much. But it's Fair enough. Yeah, because it, because it is Infinity Challenge. But, like, I do own the... 142 nightmare the original 14 attack oh jeez yep nightmare um i don't own the original thanos i own the the next set that he was like reprinted same exact dial in uh but uh, yeah i own enough of this set where i probably never play any of it even if i like have that wolverine i don't know if i'll ever play it but yeah. um it is fun to see like the certain things that could have been done and that were done back in the day, especially like Fire Lord. He got legacy carded, so like that Fire Lord being like able to be carried, and then before they had rules about not taking actions after being carried, he was like a fourteen for four, just a menace. Right, he was just the best stuff. for it because he just had just <laughs> stupid combat values. Right, yeah. Oh god, thirteen for and one yeah, of these RC and everything. Got, uh, was it the was it the rookie or the veteran? I don't know. One of the Magnetos got uh, legacy. Did they get a well, legacy? Mm. I think. At least it's it's the same sculpt. I think because that sculpt looks real familiar. But yeah, that's it for Infinity Challenge. A lot of the RVV stuff is just anything it's that's tough. generic is like like do you want to do you want me to list off what the Shield Agent one, two, and three does? Because oh, uh, you better no printed powers. Uh, let's go over what the starting stats are. Um, the 10.1 is a 6, 7, 14, 1. The 12.1 is a 6, 7, 14, 1. Mm. And the 14.1 is a 6, 7, 15, 2. So Ooh. If you really want that shield team ability, maybe, maybe. Also, the keywords are weird. The 10.1 has shield and soldier. The 12.1 has shield, soldier, spy. And then the fourteen point one has shield. He knows what he's about. Yeah. He's just he's a shield agent for life. He's, he's like, locked I'm a in veteran. shield only. No longer a soldier. No longer a spy. I am shield. I eat, breathe shield. As you can dude. tell from my seven for two, six range, fourteen points. Yeah. He bumped that damage up. He was like, I mean, that's that's we're a lot shooting of people. A lot of we're RAVs shooting people for shield. I'm using the rookie because it does something real cheap. Or yeah. I'm using the experienced, or like, not the experienced. I'm using the rookie because it's real cheap, or I'm using the veteran because it does something that none of the other ones do, kind of thing. Um, gosh. Even like the scroll, like, there's scroll, three scroll agents, rookie, experienced veteran. Not a single one of them has printed shape change. Uh, scroll warrior. It is so wild. Rookie, experienced veteran. Not a C and when I say not a single one of them has printed shape change, they don't have a single printed power. These are just dial, like literally blank dials. Now, what what thing. makes this stuff unique from the shield agent? You know, like yeah. that's like dang. the crazy thing is like 
Why the oh, random the team henchman? Ability. Bro, the henchman has two damage on the rookie and <laughs> experience. The shield agent doesn't? They went through training and they don't have a two damage? Oh. That's if wild. You, if you yeah. Were, hey, I really want to play Wolfsbane. Well, back in the day, you were in luck because you could push Wolfsbane to click two where she had blades. Oh, perfect. But if you didn't do that, guess what? Whole dial She's does garbage. nothing. Like <laughs> blank dial except for click two, three, four. That's the three clicks where she has a single power, and that is blades. Now, uh, this era of hero clicks, some people might be a little nostalgic for it and like honestly if like we played all this stuff so like we there did is a bit of fun factor if you're playing all the same stuff versus all the same stuff but at the end of the day no it's uh from infinity challenge there's nothing really worth collecting outside of legacy figures unless you really like certain sculpts yeah that's what i was about to say certain sculpts if you're a completionist on certain characters there's definitely some characters for you to pick up but, yeah, besides that, there really is just not much to pick up from Infinity Challenge. In fact, I don't have a pick from Infinity Challenge. I kind of looked at everything, and I was like, nah, man, I'm good. Dude, we can... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm good on this. Um, Do you have congratulations a pick from Hypertime? To... I don't have a pick from Hypertime either. It, See, I don't have a pick until... Hypertime is one where explosion. I... Explosion. I was clicking through it and I was like, is anything from this? Because I don't, I don't own a whole lot of hyper time. I have, I definitely have some Brainiacs because I sure. recognize that sculpt. Fun sculpt, cool sculpt. Uh, same with like Parasite, Desaad. Uh I don't even own that dark side. Um, but I will say, yeah, hyper time seems like a much more unbalanced set than Infin Infinity Challenge, uh, just on like the the basis of it. But, um, no, I can't pick a single thing from there that I yeah. like, actually want to collect. The sculpts aren't, like, my jam. Uh, most of, like, the dials are just weird. I don't know. There's not a single Clayface in the set, but there's Clayface 3, which is, like... Yeah, I don't know what all that's about. Beyond Batman something. I, like, when did, you know, it was, like, Clayface, Kid Clayface, and then, like, Clayface 3, The Reckoning or something. I don't know who that is or why he has a cape and boxing gloves but yeah i i can't pick a whole lot out of hyper time I'm sure the generics are great because they're real cheap and they have team abilities but other than that yeah are we feeling about clobber in time here Ooh, clobber in time i actually do have a single pick from clobbering time nice it is so other than like the logan with cowboy hat which is there is an REV set of Logan with Cowboy Hat where you either start you start with stealth no matter what, but then you get a varying amount of flurry and also blades at some point. So like pretty cool for sixty points. Like you know if you land on click three, maybe he's worth something. Uh, the Doom from this set, I'm okay with. Uh, there's the experienced or no veteran Doom that's a uh, running shot twelve for three with perplex. So you could be a 13 or 3 or a 13 with energy explosion, 10 range, 2 lightning bolts. Some decent, like, the range values are always something to keep in mind. But no, the one I'm picking here is specifically because Scott Dignostio, I think, uh, pointed this guy out at one point. And this is a 086 Nick Fury. Which okay. starts with stealth and leadership on clicks 1 and 2. Then he goes to running shot outwit for clicks 3 and 4. And then on clicks five and six, he gets mastermind. So it's like a little bit of like a story. Like at the first, he's like behind the scenes. He's stealth. He's, mm. you know, he's he's doing what Nick Fury does. He's like leading people. But then he has to get into the action midway. And then at the end of his dial, he's tossing some like shield soldiers in front of him kind of thing. So, I like Okay, it. I do kind of like that. Yeah, that's, mm. that's my only pick from this set. Because honestly, like, I would never play it personally but yeah. i enjoy the dial i enjoy the it's got a story yeah but, uh yeah. to just throw out one person i'll go with vampire lackey the experienced or the veteran excuse me only for the reason that it's like wow uh this is a hero clicks figure this exists this is in this game with other things that make more sense this is hilarious 
uh, this <laughs> gray tank top, short shorts woman with big old teeth and a katana is, you know, she a vampire lackey. She's just a little part of a vampire horde, I guess. Uh, and it's a hilarious dial and just a hilarious sculpt that this was a thing that Marvel was like, yeah, yeah, put that put that in the game. Blade's real big up and coming right now. We got to we got to push that. Yeah, you, you're going to want really at least funny. like three versions of a vampire lackey because there's going to be a lot of vampires coming out very soon. So this was 2002. Yeah, there's definitely like yeah. more Blade movies and stuff to, <laughs> to appear after this. So yeah, they definitely like I don't know if you've heard of this cool cat named Wesley Snipes, but uh real cool we're about dude to do some cool stuff with him. So <laughs> about to blow your mind. Yeah. Trust us. Uh, we get a back-to-back Marvel set. Uh, we go on to Explosion next here after clobbering time. What's your what's your pick from Explosion here, Simeon? Uh, if it's not the same as yours, I I'd, I'd be surprised. It's obviously okay. Zero zero one. Yeah, it's con artist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eleven <laughs> point perplex. It's it's only perplex on click two, but used to be pretty easy to get figures to click two. So yeah, that's the most obvious. Just Yep. Even to this day, the cheapest version of Perplex, I think. Uh, not the cheapest version of, like, a uh, way to modify stats, but definitely the cheapest Perplex. Cheapest Perplex, yeah, dude. Yeah. All right. And, uh, other than that, there's some cool sculpts. I have, like, the leader from this one. He's got, like, a semi-translucent head and stuff. Mm. I've got some cool sculpts from this set, but, like, nothing that really sticks out outside of that, I think. I think, yeah, this is a, a con artist set, and I guess this Apocalypse got legacied, right? Zero eighty. Yeah, Apocalypse. I think so. Yeah, that sounds right. So, yeah, some cool things in the set, for sure, but the only Anything... thing worth mentioning is a con artist for some oh, reason. That's just, that's just facts, though. Just facts. Con artist, she's the best. She's the goat from the set. She's got a legacy. I think if you ask a lot of people around the time, they'll be like, oh, yeah, con artist rocks. Uh, Cosmic Justice. Anything tickling your fancy from Cosmic Justice? Oh, man. It's another, like, I love generics, but, like, when the generics just don't have anything special about them, they don't do anything, I have a hard time caring. Um, yeah. I think the Deathstroke... Is one That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I I don't I know if it's... Sculpt, I remember. Yeah. I remember playing him once or twice, and I liked his sculpt, but I don't, like, looking at it now, I'm like, I don't know why I did. <laughs> like, <laughs> Hitting the little half squat, bent knees, dual-wielding yeah. pistols. Did you play this in Thursday Throwdown? This Deathstroke, for some reason, looks familiar to me, or maybe I did. Oh, I definitely remember don't know. Drew from cosmic justice i don't know okay it's been long enough that like i i genuinely don't know which of us played this and what figure yeah I dude played from I... this but i feel like mordru for sure got played um i hope deathstroke was one of like the figures that got yeah killed. but yeah there's there's some cool sculpts in this set like fire there are interesting uh starman pretty boring but like starfire fairly classic looking sculpt um, yeah, it's just like a, a very, if you've seen classic looking hero clicks, a lot of these are like very well sculpted. You know, there's yeah. back in the day, it was, uh, somebody, I don't know if they're hand sculpting them because they had to use, uh, like mold or not molds. Um, they had to like cast them. They like look super hand sculpted. I think yeah. they were, yeah. Hand sculpted then cast into molds or something. So yeah, like there's differences between each figure because it was different artists doing like the sculpts if you look on uh hc realms of all places oh that's right actually a way to for these really old sets there's a way to like look at who the sculptor was for different things but yeah that's all i can really say about this set yeah. it doesn't nothing really like sticks out crazy in the indie set i can Ooh. definitely say i really liked the Whatever, the veteran Judge Dredd. I thought he was really cool. Uh, the 10-speed running shot with 8 range, double target. Even if it was a 11 for 2 in-cap outwit. And he was only a 15 defense with ESD. But I I really liked this veteran Judge Dredd. I was a big fan of him. 
Yeah. Uh, the Hellboys, mm. rookie uh, experience veteran. Were, like, they had the same exact dial, just different combat values. Um, the person I really, really took a shine to from the set was Rasputin. And, oh, uh, yeah. That's because I played him in uh, Thursday Throwdown. I can't remember. I assume it was the the veteran one, the 111-point Rasputin. I would assume so. He's a 9 for 2 with Perplex and uh, ex- or Precision. Jeez. Penetrating Psychic Blast and Perplex. Um, but it was the BPRD team ability that really made him uh, shine because he could wild card other team abilities. And I mm. think he was wild carding... Gosh, what was it? It was one of the other indie team abilities that he wild carded that gave him like a plus one attack. So he actually ended up being like an eleven most turns. Which, oh yeah, it was was it cross gen? No, it was uh, not top cow. Top cow team ability also very cool. Witchblade, interesting. Okay, of like all like the characters like in this set, but like it makes sense that Witchblade was there, just not like the Witchblade that I think most people would be used to. But yeah, uh, I'm just going to stick with uh, good old Rasputin, because right it's fun to say. Rasputin, na 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 Russian. Uh, oh, critical go. Mass. I got nothing for Critical Mass. I, I itched my brain, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm good on leaving out Critical Mass. Um, if you have anything, go for it, but I got, I got nothing for Critical Mass. I mean, I own... I own a lot of like the rhinos from Critical Mass. He's got like a very mech suit kind of like mm. Colossus like Under Armour kind of thing going on. Same with Mole Man. I own like a lot of those from Critical Mass, but uh, Brood and Brood Queen. I own a bunch of those. I own a few patches. I own a lot from this. Same with Spider Man. Yeah, like there's a lot of like cool sculpts in this set. I can't pick out something that actually like is worth. Like, it's dial doing anything yeah like it's just even like the le's or not the le's but like the the unique figures from the set that i own like i own the cersei from the set and poof eight range mind control tk with a 10 speed nine attack and that's that's the two powers she has for clicks one and two Oof. Like, Oof. yeah it's just it's not great uh it's also one of the only sets that has a beta ray bill in it and I won't mm. say they don't do them justice, but don't try and play it in modern. Yeah, I'm sure at the time, a big, super strength, long, beefy dial like that had to see some play, right? It had to. Uh, but jumping over into Unleashed, I also just have nothing for Unleashed. Uh, I got nothing for Unleashed. Shout out to the one guy on Facebook who posted owning like 30 of these rocket reds that's all i'll say for unleashed that does live in my brain rent free where every once in a while i'll be like dang remember that guy that got the adam shiver rocket red box and you're like kind of weird that that's like your number one character but then he like doubled down and he had like 30 rocket reds and then at that point it's like that rocks i'm so pro that like that kind of kicks butt but that, besides that, that's it. That's what lives in my brain. Oh, also the general. The fact that he is just a figure that exists in this set. That's really funny. Yeah, I can't think of... Oh, actually, I do own the general. Yeah. Now that you say that, like... I Perfect. Own the general and... That's all we needed. Out of that set, I think that's basically the only one. Mr. Bones is, like, just from the name mm. alone, pretty fun. That is uh, funny. Oh, this was the first set that we started getting like KC figures in, so that's, I guess, worth a, a mention. We got like Bat Center, it is. Magog, Superman, Magog, Superman, yeah. Wonder Woman. Uh, but yeah, I I don't own anything outside of the general and maybe Metallo. I feel like Metallo, that goofy looking robot thing, I think I might have that. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and skip Universe because that's a, literally a reprint set. Man. Yeah. Wild that they made a reprint set. I uh, maybe it was Thanos just... from Universe, though. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, so sad. Oh, so sad. Uh, going into Ultimates, though, my favorite piece from Ultimates is, are just the Punishers in it. It's a really cool, for no other reason than a sculpt. He's doing the Max Payne door dive, both pistols out, shooting sideways. And the way they make this sculpt happen is he's in a trench coat. 
And so the little coat flap is what is resting, which I just think is so cool in such a dynamic sculpt, and I love it. And we got it more recently in like 2019, 2020 with the the Chase guy, the DC guy, WKO figure. But oh, I love this uh, Punisher. I love his sculpt. Ambrose I think it's just Chase, really, really yeah. cool. Ambrose Chase, that's who it is. But yeah, Punisher definitely was the OG of this. The bullet time. Yeah. Max Payne jump. Yeah. Um, oh, man, like we've got, we've got a cool Wolverine. And then for whatever reason, there's a purple beast in this set. Mm. Um, there's, there's Ghost Rider. I get, man, I, I can't shout anything from this set out. I just, I don't, I don't quite like it. Other than the sculpts, there's nothing from this set that I'm like really sold on. Like, haven't collected it. I don't think I own anything specifically. Oh, no, that's not true. I own the unique Zorn. Um, I know that because I looked at his dial and I said, why? What? <laughs> Who? Why? He's a 10 for 4 with telekinesis his whole dial and support on his top dial. And he's 94 points. No speed attack, nothing. So, like, yeah. There's some cool figures in this set for sure, but nothing that I, like particularly was like sold on like crazy about mutant mayhem you got any i have nothing for mutant mayhem this is a Ooh, i do not skip for me you got it okay yeah because uh one of these figures got legacy carded and i owned it prior to like it getting legacy carded uh just because sculpt alone so that is it's one of the uniques is it not where 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 are you Oh, this is the first time we see Feral Wolverine after Magneto like tore the metal out of his body, and he's got no mm. nose, got an REV of Feral Wolverine. So, like, I do own those. Um, one of the Deadpool's I want to say from this set got legacied. Might be the veteran. It was one of the Deadpool's. Was the veteran? I think. So. Yeah, it was seventy-eight. Um, uh, and, and am I? thinking of the wrong set because i swore it was mutant mayhem but no this deadpool oh, this is mutant, the deadpool that has it mutations and monsters the set that i'm thinking of for the other figure i also oh. own the the translucent hulk from this set so i i own a few things from this set um and then not for nothing the uh one of the first two by twos not the first but like one of the first two by twos uh the dark phoenix technically is part of the set so yeah. Next up, getting into Legacy, I do at least have to shout out. I've got no real special ties to Legacy. Sorry, Green Lantern and other characters. Uh, but the 087 Wonder Woman was one of the best figures I pulled for an online sealed tournament that listener Alex Morse held in early 2020 or 2021, some, somewhere. I think it was 2020. Um and this Wonder Woman was, like, the best thing I pulled. And I actually thought she looks really cool. And I think it's honestly kind of a shame that Legacy Wonder Woman did not get a Legacy card. And I think she looks really sweet. Um, but she was, like, the best figure I pulled. And she is what did bring me victory over some of the scarier sealed opponents in this set that I can't even really think of. But, yeah. So that's my Legacy pick. Yeah. I, the only thing I remember from this set is Ares. Because... Yeah. I think... <laughs> Not only was that one of the ones that I played, but it's also one of the ones that I cosplayed. Uh, but yeah, just being a natural 14 for 5 is kind of insane. Back pretty in ridiculous. Day. It's pretty nuts. defense. Like, you look at the rest of this set, you look at the sets around this, is there something that can crack a 19 defense easily? No. Like, unless it's the veteran version, like uh, experienced Superboys in 9. Veteran Super yeah. is a 10. Uh, veteran Sinestro is an 11. So, like, there's a few things that where it's like a maybe. It's like a big maybe. But if you don't take care of him right away, then he's just going to clock that person, like, right off the bat. Uh, obviously, the KC Flash, KC Green Lantern from the set. Um, very iconic figures. There's also Red Robin, right. and Hawkman, Mongol. Like, there's other figures that, like, are around that kind of range of interesting. Uh, this is the, yeah, that Green Lantern is the K or the, the yeah, that's the KCGL. That's, that's the, yeah, that's the man right there. So like, that's obviously like one that like comes to mind just cause like I've seen that sculpt on tables 
multiple times since he got legacied. But uh, no, Ares is definitely the one that I think of first and foremost, for sure. We have Fantastic Forces. Now, despite me not choosing anything from Fantastic Forces, I do know this set is very iconic for a lot of reasons. Having amazing sculpts. Uh, it was a lot of people's favorite sets, I want to say, early on. Um, but there's not a whole lot in Fantastic Forces for me. I do think, though, this has some of my favorite uh, LE or unique silver ring figures that we've seen in any of these older sets. Uh, with Arnim Zola, Mad Thinker, Volcana, like that's really cool. The Baron Blood, Nimrod, uh, the Wolverine's pretty sweet. I really like Warlock. And then, of course, uh, Goat Hooves, Doctor Doom, and then 2099 Spider Man. I really think this is a crazy strong, uh, whatever, limited edition figures from this set. I think it's really cool, but I've got nothing with any total personal attachment to Fantastic Forces. Yeah, Lockjaw is one of the ones that got legacy true and he was a pain in my butt yeah he sucks <laughs> uh this was one of the first sets that i i personally remember where there's like the main set had a lot of like peanut bases so lockjaw being one of them uh i have a lot of the black knights because he's on like his robo horse which is just was not a long period in the comics but like very long period in the hero clicks and then Hawkeye on his uh, Avengers cycle or whatever that was. Um, is there anything that I actually like ever played from this set? I think the Doctor Strange, the veteran Doctor Strange, I remember playing once. Uh, outside of that, like, not really. No. Yeah. I think it's a, it's one of those sets where it's... Yeah, Miguel O'Hara looks super cool. Looking the sick. Doctor Doom, the, like, the Hooves Doctor Doom. Love that one, and I love the legacy card, so I played him a few times because of that. Uh, but no, there's not a lot of stuff that I've actually played from this set. Anything from Icons striking your fancy? Icons is another miss for me personally. I have that Aquaman sculpt. Never played Beautiful. it. Have that Raven sculpt because it's like, what what is happening with this sculpt? It's what I think of every time I see it. Um. The Killing Joke Joker, I definitely have that sculpt. I don't know if it's the rookie, experienced, or veteran. <sighs> Is there anything that I've actually played from this set, though? Nope, nothing from this set. I have sculpts from it. I, I definitely own figures from it, but I have not played anything from my god. Yeah. Armor Wars, I, I really hope at the time this was a standout Marvel set, because when I look at the set list, I'm like, wow, this set kind of rocks. Um, I really like Armor Wars, and to no one's surprise, uh, my favorite figure is the veteran Captain America from it. But more so than that, uh, when I was getting into the game early starting out, this was like one of my favorite Captain America pieces. I always thought Captain America belonged in that 100 to 120-ish point value range. I think that personally felt good to me. And besides him not starting with running shot and just starting with charge instead, this is like my all time like favorite very early game Captain America with the heavy impervious representing the shield. And then after that, just kind of moving on to some toughness. He's got some leadership, get some exploit in there. Uh, but I always really, really, really liked the veteran Captain America from Armor Wars. Yeah, I don't think I have. I'm I own a few of these figures. I know Shaman. I own him because like that's one of like the more dynamic sculpts in the set. Um, I own the like the War Machines and the Crimson Dynamos from this set. What have I played from this set? Maybe Ultron, like a long time ago. Uh, maybe the Unique Sentry, a long time ago. Yeah, that's about it. Cause no, I feel like this set is one that I, I quite heavily. Oh wait. That unique Magneto, I definitely played at one point. He's a 12-5 with running shot, 10 range. Yeah. I definitely played him. I don't know if this was a Thursday throwdown, but I, I definitely played him at some point, and I know I own him for whatever reason. So Magneto, the 096 one. So that's yeah. it for there you go. Armor Wars for whatever reason. Collateral damage, I got nothing. I got nothing on old CD here. Oh. Collateral damage. Asriel looks like. cool. I'll say that. He looks pretty sick. But yeah, I don't really I know. I feel like Ultimate Clayface is like the shout out 
Mm. I feel like everyone loves Ultimate Clayface. Uh, the three by six Spectre is listed on this. Which oh, I there we go. Have played. Um, he has his own complete set of rules and stuff, but uh, yeah, like the only thing from the base set, the main set that I I know is Ultimate Clayface, just because like cool sculpt and also uh, pretty usable dial, at least back in the day. Uh, Blue Superman, Red Superman. Nope, not really worth it. I don't think, no, because, like, even Emerald Empress, like, she got a better showing in uh, Slosh. Oh, way, so, way better. No, just the 3x6 uh, the and Ultimate Clayface are the two big things in that one. Next up in Sinister here. Uh, my only pick from Sinister is the LE Kyle Richmond, and that is just the Nighthawk LE. And the only reason I like this figure, or even really like this character, is during Fear Itself, one of the many issues was Howard the Ducks team, the Fright... Not the Frightful Four, the Fearless Four, I think is what they called themselves. And it was She-Hulk, Howard the Duck, Frankenstein's Monster, and Nighthawk. And so, in order to like complete the team, they, we hadn't gotten, and this time in my hero clicks career slash everybody in hero clicks we hadn't gotten the new nighthawk yet that was going to be in what's it called nick fury so this was the in my oh, opinion i guess sure. the best and only nighthawk that we had and so the kyle richmond is my go-to version of nighthawk at the very least in the early game just to make that team that comic accurate team i mean yeah the set had some amazing sculpts rhino Pretty solid sculpt. Uh, I really loved Speed Demon's sculpt. Daredevil, all the like versions of Daredevil were the like version of him hanging off like the cross, like the cemetery cross kind of thing, which is just like very just iconic cool. and cool. Um, is there anything that I actually played from this set? I think I played the Unique Stilt Man once, just because I owned it. Uh, but no, there's. Nothing that really comes to mind. That that Nighthawk does look familiar. I think I own it. Um, but nothing from this set really comes to mind as far as uh, figures that I've played. Okay. Going to Supernova. I've opened too much Supernova. The GOAT. The GOAT is Colonel America. Supernova's all-time favorite fig from Supernova. He rocks. Uh, the rest of it. Yeah. Literally the entire set. It's in my closet, but Super, uh, Colonel America is the GOAT from Supernova. He's the man. Yeah, I think it's it's all the zombies and then everything Gotta be. underneath that is, like, secondary. Um, I, yeah, I own, like, the the Graviton with, like, his flight base. Uh, that is a cool... Corvac sculpt is actually kind of cool. There are actually a lot of neat sculpts in this yeah. set. Yeah, there's, there's some decent sculpts. Um, I don't know anything about, like, dials because I think outside of, uh, like zombie wolverine i don't think i've played anything from this set very fair yeah but <laughs> i mean an actual lalandra that almost is powerful nope not just kidding She's nope not. uh-uh nice uh, try we've got another hyperion uh and his veteran version is eh, he's an 11 for 5 with hypersonic and super strength so at the time, he could have done Pretty good. What like eight damage with a single attack? That's I think only seven. Bad. I don't know if they had the plus three. Did they not back yeah, then yeah. yet? I don't They're know. Super heavies yet, but Avengers. We get oh, finally. Oh no, sorry, I almost skipped a set. Origins. Technically, I have nothing for Origins though. Origins. Uh, I'll say sh- shout out Sandman because oh, that version is really cool. Got Catman. Definitely a few of these figures that I own, but what a wonky set. Like, what were they? The Mr. Negative from this set was like one of like the weirdest sculpts. It's just like, I I don't want. Uh, Stripe from JSA. I think this is one of the only versions of Stripe that we get in Hero Clicks. We got one in like. There's not a lot. JLA. Like this in JLU. JLU? Is that? Yeah, JLU. Um, one of the first. Animal Man slash Animal Master, I guess, is what they were calling him for some reason. Interesting. Uh, but, yeah. No. Not a single thing that I can pick out from this set that I... Oh, Wizard Shazam sitting in his chair. Okay, mm, that's, that's yeah. Yeah. 
you pulled um, off that looks so good. You got to go with that. Yeah, that's that's the only one I remember because yeah, I, I recreated that bald cap and uh, white hair. Next up, yeah, we are we're in the carded era. Oh, we've made it. We're free. Uh, so in the Avengers set, so this is a set that was actually at uh, a Walmart in South Dakota for a long time. And so every time we would ever go to this Walmart, I'd be like, please, mom, please, dad, give me $10 for a booster of Avengers. For some reason it was there. I don't know why it was there. I'd literally never seen hero cooks anywhere else. And I knew these were super old at the time, but I still bought the heck out of them. Um, there are so many good figures in the Avenger set that I played a ton of. The Captain America, the Cap and Bucky, the Bucky Rare, uh, the U.S. Agent, the Baron Zemo. There's a lot of great figures. But the one that takes it for me is the 35-point Scarlet Witch. She was, for the longest time, the cheapest Avengers barrier slash probability control. And you would just push her one click, and she has both barrier and prop, and she's a flight and she has eight range with that prob and barrier, so I really, really like use the heck out of this old school Scarlet Witch, and I always really liked her. Yeah, <clears throat> well, I mean, when it comes to Avengers, first and foremost, I have to go with Shang Chi. Uh, Absolutely, he is obviously one of like my top four Shang Chi's of all time at the very of course. least. So, like, of course. he obvious like shout out to him because I don't know how I literally like I made a video where he's top three i think in the video yeah. um, really that's pretty good honor yeah i mean it's just he's just that good hey andy's better now he is 50 50 <laughs> super senses top dial that's true he is look at he that like 50 50 super senses always a 12 for three yeah if only it also had a uh, avengers but it does not uh thin oh. man is like one of those figures where like i just Okay. Naturally, accidentally, whatever had like five of them for no reason. It's just like he just kept popping up, and I didn't know who he was until I was like, I was like, who is Thin Man? Because I thought he was for sure like Great Lakes Avengers Flat Man, and I was like, no, that, but somehow worse. And I was like, like, what are you guys doing? What are you doing, Marvel? Like, why? Um, but yeah, there. So I had like, I had like five. Bruce Dixon's Thin Man's, uh, and then the Namor, one of like the the most iconic Namors bursting out of the water. That was like one that I really cared, not deeply about, but like I I really liked the sculpt. And then the uh, the Ares, we don't get a lot of Marvel Ares, but like this is classic Marvel Ares to me. The zero fifty four, uh, I guess super rare. Um, but yeah, that was those are the ones from the set that I actually own that I've actually played. Like, I, I can't say much. Like, they don't age well, obviously. So, oh, also Dragon Man on his flight base, right? Dude, you could not get that guy to stand up on his base. Yeah, it was just like so hard. The most top-heavy flight base they ever encountered. And then at some point, they're just like, what if we just uh, make it part of the sculpt? Oh, and then I mean, I have to shout out Two-Gun Kid. I cosplayed Two-Gun Kid. Of course when I played this set, and also he got a legacy card, so multiple reasons why Two-Gun Kid deserves to be shouted out, so yeah, vacuum cleaner and all. Oh, that's right. Uh, Justice League uh, is the next set, and they also had Justice League for sale at the same Walmart. They had Avengers for sale. I bought much less Justice League, Um but I will, I have to shout out Vigilante and the flying motorcycle. Vigilante rocks. Uh, he's just a peanut based figure. He's a little cowboy on a motorcycle, and he's so freaking cool. Celebrity Seven Soldiers. But until they errated him, and it's like this massive errata list, and I never found it for the longest time. So we just played it as printed, and he has. Uh, normally he was supposed to have the transporter boot symbol but he has transporter wing printed on his base so flying motorcycle vigilante was a staple in a lot of my games and i just loved them Heck yeah uh the only thing i can really shout out from this set the only thing that i remember is plastic man as a, mm. a giant not even kite he's like a giant para something i don't know like, like parasail parasail thing like yeah it's it's massive. Uh, he's got 
the transporter flight symbol, and that's what he that's what he did. Like that's that was his big thing. Uh, but no, I didn't collect a whole lot of this set. So that's outside of like him and like Starro and the possessed Starro peoples. I don't even have the uh, the really cool Lobo on the bike that mm. apparently is part of the set. I'm just now looking at yeah. Next up, the Mutations and Monsters set. I mean, ours might be the same here, but mine is the 056 Super Rare Wolverine, the Galactus Zombie Wolverine. I think he's awesome. Ooh. Yeah. It's definitely like one yeah. of my top ones. Uh, Mutations and Monsters. Well, the one that I was thinking of earlier, I believe, maybe. Okay, yeah. Devil Dinosaur and Moon Boy. Is like mm. Definitely like I own too many of these kind of things. Um, Fabian Cortez, Green Scar. There's a lot of like awesome sculpts. I probably would never play them, but like I own enough of them. Zax, the like translucent electric monster that uh, yeah is a Hulk guy. It's the only version that we've ever gotten of Zax. Uh, also, one of the only Exiles versions of Morph that ever existed. So just kind of yeah. wild. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Exiles keyworded morph from this set. And then is this... Oh, r- yeah, Rampaging Hulk. Rampaging Hulk is one of the ones I uh, I keep buying. Every so often, I buy another one just in case. Okay. Because I feel like this is a perfect Hulk to Legacy card. It's like, not only great dial, like, perfect, like, natural dial to, like, complement with some Legacy stuff, but, like, the sculpt... Hulk slamming his fist down, rocks exploding out away from it. I feel like this is a, a perfect sculpt to Legacy Card someday. So I keep every so often, I buy another Rampaging Hulk. That is I don't hilarious. Want. I'm up to like four or five right now. But like one of these days, maybe. 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 Just maybe. <laughs> but from this set, I think, uh, no, this Apocalypse hasn't been Legacy Carded. I don't. Has anything been legacy carded from the set? I've also bought from the uh, the Wolverine mutations and monsters. Yeah. I don't think so, which I think is just a shame, um, because Pete Wisdom deserves to be legacy carded, and so the fact that his energy explosion was just called orange yeah. just deserves to be like that's so Over funny. Sal- Sa- I don't know. There's a lot of really Savage. good sculpts in this set. Hulkbuster. I think that could come back. Uh, yeah, there's. Just a lot of things that you could work with. Super Adaptoid for sure. Man, X twenty three coming out amazing, but in a set from two thousand seven. She was what oh, a character for less than three or four years. Uh, the leader with his like two little moloid creatures next to him. Oh, that is actually a figure I bought because I think it might get a legacy card. That yeah. leader is actually like I think it's really cool. He's really good. They don't pop like, off the base. Little, oh. One of the one characters from the set that did get legacied, Unus the Untouchable. Oh, uh, classic! In, uh, How could Swords. you forget? Yeah. Uh, oh, the the rare Spider Man, the like zombie Spider Man on the barrel. I have like seventeen of those. For Being so reason. much better than the Chase, which is really funny. The Omega Red, probably the best sculpt they've ever done and ever will do for Omega Red. They've made better versions of Omega Red. But yeah, that's like, pretty cool. That sculpt, I own. Two <sighs> nah, it's pretty sick. Because, like him standing on, I I don't know if it's like a piece of a sentinel or what, but like, like the uh, the little like carbonadium whips that he's got like extended. He doesn't do yeah. that in most of his sculpts, and this is the best version of that for sure. Yeah, yeah. he looks awesome. Very very good sculpt set to be honest. There's it really kind of really was misses. Like and I mean as far as like misses go like. Uncommon ant or uncommon giant man eating part of like a Black Panther. Not yeah, a big it's hilarious. Miss. That's kind of a good kind for an of uncommon solid, uh, skull. Kind of rocks. Yeah. Next up, we got Crisis. It's Uncle Sam. Come on, this yeah. this dude rocks. Yeah, it's. I don't think there's anything that tops that. There's no way, right? No. Like uh, he's just so cool. Uncle for a time, is, uh, I did really like chief in this set but i mean just uncle sam is so cool he's got a lot of really flavorful powers he's really fun to play he's old he's aged he's aged but he's really cool he's really fun 
Yeah. And, I mean, if there's any figure that deserves it... Oh, like yeah. Hard. He's only a rare, and, man, the amount of flavor they packed into, like, two powers that just made him feel worth paying the 140 points for. I mean, he had movement attack from his, uh, you know, passenger right foot ability, whatever. Um, that combined with his, like, modify attack, blah, blah, blah. So, like, you would take a minus two, but then you would modify attack plus one for each friendly character four or fewer squares away to which Uncle Sam can draw a clean line of fire and that is marked with one or more action tokens. So, like, there's a possibility you would take a minus two and then boost up plus five, especially back in this day and age when, like, that was not... You know, you weren't playing a ton of, like, high point figures. So it was yeah. quite possible you'd have a 13 for four, and then if you got knocked past that, then, like, you had a chance where he just became as big as my country, where he just gets <laughs> giant size and, like, flurry on a lot of the clicks where he's giant size. So, yeah, him being giant sized, uh, him having exploit, or not exploit, uh, him having support and regen, like, bottom dial. I don't know. I think. Yeah, Uncle Sam, clearly the main thing from this set. I don't know if there's anything we're missing, but it's hard to uh, it's hard to care when Uncle Sam is, like, quite literally the best thing in this set. Yeah. I mean, ugh, he just rocks. He rocks so much. Secret Invasion, another standout set in its time. Secret Invasion was crazy popular. I don't know if it was a big power creep set or what it was, but I do hear a lot of people around this era just talk about like how good of a set Secret Invasion was. I also, I think it was really fun. I think mean, there's a lot of really cool stuff in it that I personally like. One of my first Hero Clicks products just ever was the, it was like a three pack. It was called a Classics, but it had the Iron Man, Iron Fist, and the Punisher from Secret Invasion in it. And it rocked. I played the heck out of Punisher. Punisher's probably my favorite thing from the set. He's got his big Gatling gun up over this ledge of a building. And he's got this really cool power where he can just keep making ranged attacks to target people. It rocks. It's so much fun. So I really enjoy it. So yeah, it's just Secret Invasion. Easy, easy blast for me. Easy, easy choice is that Punisher. Yeah, I think uh, Happy Meal Spider-Man 001. That's pretty good got a legacy card I, I played against him recently pretty solid little figure uh because of that um there's also like the power pack i think this was the first set where the power pack showed up and they've got some cool sculpts i guess uh so yeah there's that um other than that yeah i don't i don't think yeah. so i think uh I, for whatever reason i own a ton of the gamora from this set Probably like, ah. one of, like the worst versions of Gamora, but she happens to be a super rare, uh, decent sculpt for like early comic book Gamora. But um, compared to like the rest of the set, with like the interesting, cool stuff, like the the Jarvis scroll and whatever else is going on, yeah, not great. Oh, also, I don't know. I think everyone should own the thing holding the hot dog cart. Oh, dude, a classic. Yeah. I don't know he does look just so cool. This set only, or if there's other sets where he's doing that, but yeah, definitely a, a classic sculpt. Arkham Asylum is a set that, again, I feel like people gotta love Arkham Asylum. At the same time, there really is not anything in it for me. I actually can't even remember what we played from Arkham Asylum. It's been a hot, hot, hot second. Yeah, I'm trying to click around. I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, looking at, I'm at a I loss. Don't remember which really the played. sculpts that are cool are cool though. I think Frankenstein was played. He looks similar. He looks familiar. Uh, besides that, I don't know. The sculpts that are cool look really cool, but I don't know if I'm if I've got anything really big choice for so Arkham Asylum back. here. The the uh, the bad guy from uh, the Black Adam movie, I guess. Is uh, that who that is? Oh wow. Okay. Right? Is that not like yeah, Wow, Big Red Demon guy? Yeah. yeah, I mean I think that's a yes yeah, If my memory of the amazing Black Adam movie starring <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson serves correct, this guy looks like him. 
Oh, I cannot believe I have forgotten the last <laughs> up to 12 minutes of that movie. Uh, oh, I my know God. Shang, Shang Zhu, the like crash oh, egg looking Who? Yeah. Uh, mojo character. I know that for sure because I own multiples of that. Oh, and terrifying. Absolutely Superman terrifying. Prime. I, I own two Superman Primes because. I looked at the dial and I was like, if they don't legacy this, I don't know what's going to happen. I was like, I don't know. I'm, I should probably own two. So I own two Superman Primes um, from this set specifically. He's got the Sinestro core and brute keywords. But, man, I don't... Fawn Prince of Crime is a two-by-two. Two. That's probably something that's Yikes. worth collecting. I guess so, for, like, the there's, sculpt. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of cool sculpts. I'll say... Almost zero of the dials are even remotely close to like being interesting to me. Yeah, Hammer of Thor to to yes. skip to like just an awesome set, a set that ugh, we Not ushered in a new Thor. era of hero clicks. It's so incredibly, insanely cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's Captain America. It's Hammer Four Zero Four Zero Captain America Deflection Trajectory. This is still probably the best Captain America. I mean, this guy just rocks so much. He's so awesome. So, but there was a lot of really cool stuff in the set. But this Captain America, ah, oh, so many good times, so many good memories. Yeah, it was just he was just so awesome. Uh, zero zero six Pip the Troll with his uh space gem speed power. Uh, him like. Phasing people around. Airwalker, one of like the cooler figures from the set. Sure. The uh even though he like doesn't have like a special text or anything, the Spider Man that is like all thored up using the hammer, lightning effects, great sculpt. I own it just because of the sculpt alone. Uh my personal favorite thing from this set, though, is Zero Forty Nine Ultron. He is a 12 speed, 12 attack, 18 defense, 4 damage. He does rock. Charge, pulse wave, impervious, no damage power. And uh, the amount of times that I've tried to give this guy some sort of like uh, like running shot, so you get like running shot, pulse wave, uh, because the, the main reason is he is a 12 range. 12 range. Yeah. 12 I really wish this 12. one would have got the legacy card as opposed to the oh, one we got in gosh. A60. I like this one sculpt more. I like the 12 range is nuts. Yeah, it's oh, I wish you would have got a legacy card. He's rocking the cape. He's like standing on the rock. He's like, come at me, Avengers. Like the big old like Ultron dude that he is. Uh, my only hope is that he eventually gets he gets uh, legacied and he gets some sort of running shot something that like adds to his pulse wave where it's like when he hits characters like they're knocked back and like can't reduce knockback damage or something like something like that i don't know some some kind of crazy where like i can yeah. finally do the combo that was always meant to be with this guy because i've definitely given him running shot before but his running shot becomes a six except with pulse wave rules now it's at, a four uh, oh. yeah it's just like a four so, so sad it has to be boosted somehow and at 174 top dial still very cool when you get hit to mid dial oof bad 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 ultron when you get hit to mid dial very no, bad very uh, icky no good really cool super rares from this set and then uh of course the 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 one by one surter that everyone owns for some reason also for dude, this set. in every Heroclix collection ever. Yeah, the Gert, the first version of Gertrude in York's the uh, first. I did really like the Molly Hayes holding up the big rock for the little ducklings. Oh, yes. That was quite cute. Amazing sculpt. Yeah, the, yeah, and this I think this was the first set where we got like a decent amount of the Runaways, if not like the very first set where we got Runaways. Uh, according to HC units, this is the very first set that we got runaways at all. So, see, Carolina there we go. Dean, Nico Minoru and uh, Chase Stein, Molly Hayes, Gertrude Yorks. Yeah. So, that is like a, a very iconic sculpt for Molly Hayes. It's like almost like the uh, the KC Superman one where he's like holding up a rock, but uh, she's actually saving something. Whereas KC Superman is just trying to kill. Just trying to kill. I'm seeing red. I'm trying to kill. But yeah. Um, 
Next up, Brave and the Bold. Yeah, this is probably a standout DC set. It's got all the crazy cool chases and everything, and all of the like. It's not really the chases or the coolest part. It's the coolest part are all the duo figures, aren't there? As cool as like Black yeah. Lanterns and White Lanterns and stuff are. Uh, yeah, like I think it's the duo. Cool. Duo figures are definitely like the coolest part. My favorite duo is the Lex Luthor and Brainiac because I want to say they're probably the only person in the game that has carry twelve, which is really funny. So if they were sp- Peanut sideways back when you could do that. Uh, carrying 12 people is just hilarious. It's just so funny. Yeah. I think my personal favorites, the flashes. That's a great sculpt. Uh, then the flash and green lantern, because that like gives like flash, like green lantern is making like a path for flash to run on. And then <laughs> green lantern and green arrow, because they have a trait that is must help. My sidekick, the junkie. That's so wild that they <laughs> that they printed that, that they on a tackle card. that. Yeah, that's insane to me. Yikes! Yeah, Speedy. For anyone that doesn't know, Speedy had a problem with drugs back when we called uh, people that had substance issues uh, the junkies. Junkie. So yeah, must Just... help my sidekick. The junkie. Ah, but it's like, wild that made it into hero clicks though. That that wild. flavor text. That's uh, insane. Uh and then I have to go with the like the absolute classic, like one of the like the best duo sculpts of all time. Shazam and Black Adam. Of course, of uh, course. Two lightning strikes facing opposite directions. Uh yeah, the reluctant team up, just an amazing duo figure. Something like if they don't do a, or if they don't legacy figure that at some point I'll be completely surprised because man that figure was mean that was cruel oh, and unusual was, having to play against that figure that was that just yeah, insane that, that figure was uh on the same level of like Avengers Prime but like slightly better slightly worse because you got to pick like which dial you started on obviously Did he messed me up on, like the one specific dial but yeah ah. Uh. Web of Spider-Man, a set, a very popular set. However, wasn't really playing at the time, so my favorite just kind of has to be old Ben Crawler, Ben Chung Nightcrawler. So, I mean, this figure rocks, obviously. Stupid, stupid broken in his time and just probably ruined many a person's night, but he is really cool and I think a really fun figure. So I really like the Nightcrawler from this set. I think he's a blast. Just ignoring all terrain on movement hypersonic yoink a character over bring him back to your starting area bring him back to wherever beat the freaking heck out of him uh but then you know maybe this is actually my real favorite it might be between the two but the web of spider-man deadpool is also an icon in his own right i knew you were gonna say this yeah it's almost like he's it's almost like you played this figure recently. i was like i played him yesterday <laughs> <laughs> yeah no this figure rocks ridiculous regeneration is a iconic such an iconic trait this is like the deadpool in hero clicks i still feel like yeah he's just so awesome oh my gosh he was so annoying for all of my opponents to play against and i love it i love this deadpool he rocks great yeah. licks avengers represent that that deadpool for sure is like my number one uh number two for me is the doc ock he's like got like two bags of money he's like actually good sculpt with his arms it's great sculpt yeah, then he's got, like, uh, a bunch of, like, stuff that boosts, um, the, like, Sinister Syndicate stuff. But then Spider-Hulk also exists in this set, which is just an amazing yes. sculpt. Don't even care what he does. Just the fact that he exists in the set, amazing. And then, yeah, the OG Cosmic Spider-Man. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, Cosmic Spider-Man's line of fire is never blocked. Like, 10 range, 2 lightning bolts hypersonic with 14 speed he could have an effective range of 19 with line of fire that is never blocked 12 for four with two targets so like amazing but cool. i mean we we've had a newer one this one has not been legacy card i assume at some point it might be but maybe not maybe the what if version's gonna get legacy instead who knows but yeah that's that cosmic spider-man's like absolutely one of my favorites just 
the absolute insanity that used to be 10 printed range with 14 printed speed and hypersonic. I mean, granted, he was 319 points at the time, but still, right. it, just, it just feels like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I could hypersonic like seven squares out, blast two people, hypersonic back to my starting area, because that's how fast I am and how crazy fast, my fast boy. is. Yeah, just insane. Next up, uh, DC 75th anniversary, it, it's obviously Warlord. I think we're lying to ourselves if we choose anybody but Warlord from DC 75th. He has it all. He's got two swords. He's got no pants. Really, very few clothes in general. Uh, and he's got a 44 Magnum. Are you kidding me? Well, I don't know. I literally don't know how you choose anybody but Warlord <laughs> from DC 75th. And clearly the best figure in the set. Yeah, it's definitely not Sargon the Sorcerer. No. Um, not definitely not that so- dude. Anything from DC seventy DC seventy fifth? I have to argue like it had a lot of like crazy lantern stuff and then cool sculpts. One of my favorite Superman sculpts and Calder's not a fan of Superman, but like the super rare Superman zero five zero where he's got like the giant. Yeah, I hate like, this. I actually really hate this one. The giant. I really like, hate uh, this stars one. and stripes behind him and the eagle resting on his arm. Yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah, kind of goes hard though. Yeah, if it was anybody but him, he just doesn't deserve to be there. He yeah. just doesn't. He's like, the worst. It's, it's, yeah, it's no, like, obviously goes insane. Obviously yeah. goes insane, but not not this guy. Also, not this like, guy. The, the Ares from 75th, like, it's the same as like the OG Ares, but like slightly weaker, worse? toned down. Slightly worse, but like better stats. Like doesn't have the same attack, but like a little bit higher damage. I, I don't know. And then the Bane that's like the original like OG yeah it's Bane rocks Bane. he's super uh, cool very cool the wonder twins um with uh the little the monkey dude yeah oh yeah DC 75th had a lot of cool lantern stuff that's all I'll say like, Gleek yeah is that the wonder twins guy yeah Gleek that sounds right a little yeah. monkey name um DC 75th had some cool sculpts and most of them were not like the main set stuff it was like yeah Oh, Guy Gardner Chainsaw. Yeah. Ah, that is so iconic. He is so cool. That's like that's one of the only ones that I actually would want to re-see from that set. Um, so I don't own most of DC 75th for whatever reason. I just never bought it. But yeah. It's the way it goes. It's the way it goes. Giant, Giant size, size X-Men, X-Men, Simeon. What's your, what's your jam from GSX here? Oh, is it not Pretty Boy? Is Obviously. Uh, or is it maybe it is. perhaps Roulette, who somebody bought 12 of, assuming that it would be legacy carded, only to be so sadly sad. disappointed. Uh, no, uh, Tarot, Roulette, not legacy carded. Uh, is there anything from Giant Size X Men that I actually. Okay, the Iceman, the rare Iceman, it's great sculpt. Uh, the Lockheed by himself is a really cool sculpt. I it's have pretty baller. the the Phoenix sculpts, obviously, and then the Warbound Hulk, or not Warbound, the the Horseman of Apocalypse Hulk. I feel like you have to have where he's got a sword in one hand, a whip in the other, and then uh, combined with that, you've got the Wolverine in the Horseman whatever armor. It's like one of the few times he ever wore that. And then if you if you actually bought this set. One of the figures that you actually ended up with, for sure, because I don't know if there's a way that you didn't end up with this figure, is the captain wielding Fing Fang Fu. I do, I do have the captain. Everyone he does rock. that bought any of this set owns the captain. For some reason, that came in at least one booster for anyone that like made a purchase. If you made a purchase of the set, you ended up with the captain and Fing Fang Foom's toe. So... It's just yeah. what had to happen. It's just what naturally had to happen. He's also my favorite figure from this set. I think he's really funny and he's hilarious. But yeah, everybody seems to own this guy. Well, there's the, all the two by twos that were in the Colossal Boosters. Um, obviously, Nemesis, Onslaught, whatever. Uh, yeah. Just like generically, like a figure that I, I like as like a boss battle kind of like imagination. And then Onslaught. One of the only figures they've ever printed with four printed team abilities. And also Onslaught just 
Onslaught kind of slaps as like a villain. He's just he's just a great villain. Yeah, like even like compared to Apocalypse, he's just uh really solid. Onslaught's like not like a villain that uh you have to keep around or keep in the mind or anything, but he just every so often it's like hey remember just can't forget about him. Yeah, might show up. Ooh. <laughs> the Captain America set. Oofta, the uh, the Captain America set. Man, it's 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 a great set. I love it. It's the first set I ever collected the full thing of. But the more and more I go back and look at this set, I'm just like, people could not have liked this set at the time, because I I don't see the crazy power piece, the the Nightcrawler, especially like with the power level that was in GSX. Um, I mean, I still love this set. I love so much about it. Batch Rock, Falcon, uh, the Steve Rogers, Uncommon, uh, more Next Wave stuff. The Dirk Anger is so fun in this set. Mr. Mortal is my personal favorite piece from the set. Once again, Great Lakes Avengers shout out. But I don't know. The Captain America set is just a weird set to me where I'm just like, ah, there's so much good stuff. Weapon X in the tank. All of the chases, I think, are really fun. Cap Wolf, the Captain, Cap and Ice, Rajaz, like from 1602, the only figure from 1602 we have, like Squirrel Girl, Baron Strucker, Baron Zemo, amazing, really big, cool sculpts. I love, I really do, I love this set. I love the character selection in this set, probably more than anything. Just the the amount of, like, actual Captain America allies, the amount of really cool Hydra people with the nemesis, you know, of Hydra versus S.H.I.E.L.D., all of that in this set. The Great Lakes Avengers making an appearance, their first Clicks appearance. Like, the real Great Lakes Avengers is really funny and hilarious. So, I love this set. And, yeah, Mr. Mortal's got to be my my top pick from it, even though there's I've got so many good memories of a lot of these different characters in the set. Yeah. I think, just based off of it, it's one of the most legacy-carded sets. That is also here. just wild, which I love, too. But it's yeah. so funny that this one is legacy like, the most. Yeah, Squirrel Girl, Invisible Woman, Human Torch, Weapon X, Captain America. Uh, was Cap Wolf legacy? Cap Wolf wasn't, but... Uh, Dark one. Star and Ursa Major Dark were Star, also legacy. Ursa Major. Um, I think I Black know. Panther on the throne deserves a legacy as well. I always love this piece. I think he could, you know, he's a chance in the Black Panther yeah. set. I really like also, him. Red we- or Falcon with Red Wing would be like that was cool. A great option. I love. I mean, I love the removable bystander stuff. So that would also be like perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like. My favorite from this set, obviously, I've got to go with the Human Torch with, like, the Nova Flame. Okay, yeah. And Weapon X with, like, the tank. Those are the, like, and, I mean, also, like, the Captain America with his, like, ice sign from the ice. I just loved the 3D effects that could be removed from the figure to, like, represent something. It was something that was uh, completely new and different in this set. Like, just really nailed it, and the sculpts were just amazing. Literally, like, pulled up to this day. Like, Squirrel Girl being able to remove uh, Monkey Joe's yeah. uh, tippy toe from her base, depending on which version you're playing, or uh, Weapon X breaking out of the tank. It just, like, it holds up. It's just really cool. It's awesome. Like, I, I love figures that are, like, slightly interactive in those kind of ways. Now, we finally get into the Oreo dial, quote unquote. <laughs> modern age-ish, or this bronze age, whatever you want to call it, uh, of this era, which is really cool. So Superman is sadly the set that ushers us into this era. However, uh, honestly, also kind of a bummer set. There's a handful of really cool, like, unique figures in the set. Yeah. But I think more than, more than not, kind of a bummer of a set. I really liked the common Lex Luthor because he had... I don't know. Is this like a gotcha dial? I I get. I don't know what this is really supposed to be, but it's really funny. Where he has just four clicks, Earthbound, Neutralized, Outwit. He's 101 points, and then he gets this stop click right on click five, where he's a hypersonic speed impervious, like 11 for four, like beast, which is really cool because that's kind of what he is in the uh, All Star Superman story. He's just kind of this thing that's, you know, he does that interview at jail with uh, Clark Kent, which is really cool. And then at the end of the book, it's like, ah, yes, the perfect 
cocktail was a super soldier serum or whatever. And now I am mwahaha, super evil, crazy Lex Luthor who now has Superman powers. It's really cool. It's a really neat little design. I always liked it. Um, but yeah, so this Lex Luthor is probably my favorite from this set. I did actually play it. Uh, a lot of these, for the most part, I'll, I'll say I've played. But some of the, it feels like a lot of the choices in some of these sets were just like, yeah, I guess this is my favorite figure from the set. But this one I actually did play a bunch, and I really liked them. Yeah. The only two figures I can say I played from the set are the Super Air Swamp Thing, because he okay. was quite literally, for over a decade at least, the only Swamp Thing that we had from DC. Um, so yeah, like getting a Swamp Thing out of the green, uh, hallucinatory toxins, and nature's assault. Swamp Thing is like one of those characters where... He's kind of used as like a deus ex machina kind of effect where it's just like, like Constantine obviously is like, he'll be like, hey, Swampy, what do you say? Like, uh, do something about these guys destroying forest. And Swamp Thing's like, it's true. They are destroying forest. I shall end that. And then he just makes like giant plant spikes that just destroy insane amounts of like, uh, alien technology or whatever. But anyhow, Swamp Thing's cool. I feel like we don't get enough of him in Heroclix. Uh, the next other figure that I actually play from the set is the Boom Tube Dark Side. Great sculpt. Him like walking out of like the Mother Box Boom Tube. And then he's got that Boom Tube speed power. He's got the, the trait where uh, in time penetrating damage would be like dealt to him. He can ignore one of that damage and then he can transfer, or can't transfer it, if that would be the case. But otherwise, he mm. just has, like, straight-up outwit and mastermind top dial. So, like, he just, you know, if you're playing him with a bunch of parademons, you just ignore that stuff, which is great. It's pretty sick. Um, this is also the uh, the George Masu Chokeout Black Adam set, right? That's is it? Black Adam's oh, it from. is! Yeah. That's right. Oh, my gosh. So, like, I've never played this figure, but I've seen it around a lot. It's obviously, like, a very cool sculpt. Um, and I, I assume, just looking at the dial, that it's, like, still, like, holds up to an extent where if it got legacy carded at some point, it'd be worth something, like, be worth having one in your collection just in case kind of thing. I think so. I mean, and it's also, I don't know, owning all the champion figures was something that I did for a little while before I eventually gave up on it. And I still think it's a really cool, like, fun thing for anybody that likes collecting stuff. It's just owning all the champion figures. I think it's just, like, really cool. Uh, Incredible Hulk. I got nothing for Incredible Hulk, and I don't even want to choose anything, if I'm being honest. Uh, okay, that's actually a lie. The, uh, what's it called? And then I think we end our set here. Airdrop Rob? And then we... Oh, it's Airdrop Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah, it's Airdrop Thunderbolt Ross. It's calling the airstrike. He went on many a date with Blind Al, uh, these two gray folk. Uh, they they loved going on dates with each other because she would deal him one penetrating damage and let me just call on an airstrike like instantly. Uh, and he still rocks. This version of him is better than Legacy. They didn't. Qu they tried to capture his essence. Didn't quite fully capture the essence of Airdrop Ross, but he rocks. I really, really, really dig him. I think he's really cool. So this is my easy, I guess. I, I, I wrote out Incredible Hulk too soon. This is my easy go-to. I love this Thunderbolt Ross. He was actually a blast to play. He was a ton of fun. Yeah. Uh, from this set, the Weapon Swap Punisher, one of like my, I wouldn't say favorites. I haven't played it much since the set, uh, or since like this set rotated, but uh Still think it's like an interesting collection to get the uh, rare Amadeus Cho, just as like a awesome sculpt, very good support piece. And yeah. then outside of that, like it's a very interesting set because like Joe Fix It got legacied, so like he's obviously something to look at. But how hard you want to look at that, I don't know. Um, the Ghost Rider from the set isn't the best sculpt, but it is one of the only Fantastic Four uh, keyword and team ability ones that we have. So I own that one. I I like that one. I have the A bomb. The Kzar is an amazing sculpt. So I have that uh, Savage Hulk. For whatever reason, I have like 
three or four of those as well the cosmic hulk this is one of those sets where it's like you can own the higher rarity pieces for next to nothing because most people hated this set like the the chases like wolver age mighty thor hulk mariner ice hulk hulk lops one winter hulk most people don't care about those too much so like i collected the uh six figure chase set of this set for i think 40 bucks it was like next to nothing no one really cares that much it's like a very short yeah. stint in the comics where this happened where like the heroes got hulked out hulked out heroes or whatever they called it and uh besides that they just aren't great as far as playability goes so yeah it's a cool set and i i mean honestly this is one of the sets where if, if you wanted to collect one of everything wouldn't be a terrible set you probably will never play it but like also most of this will never be clicked again like cosmic hulk probably not uh red king probably not savage hulk black bolt i mean he's been clicked a few times but like this was a good version of black bolt at least uh, it was cool yeah like if you want the warbound and if you want just like hulk adjacent kind of cool stuff there's a, a lot in this set that like should be cheap enough to pick up i don't know i don't think i'd ever play almost any of it without a legacy card but uh still a really cool set yeah and then I think let's just move on to a few community questions here. We'll pick back up with ugh, what would be the next set even? Galactic Guardians, I guess. Yeah. Uh, here Galactic next week. Galactic Guardians. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, like, oh, what's all this little mini yeah, weird like stuff? A bunch of <laughs> it was all this. Uh, unless of course there's anything that you want to mention from like, I don't know, uh, there's a Star Trek set in there. There's a Lord of the Rings mini set in there, but we'll we'll pick this back up next week, guys. I think it's been pretty fun kind of going over some of our favorite figures, uh, and I think we're kind of starting to get into the eras that Simeon and I were like, these sets were new to us soon-ish as we get into like these, like whatever, oreo base eras before it's been a lot of, yeah, we've played these figures, we've went back and collected them, but we didn't really know the state of the game, the era of the game. Uh, at that time so i'm really excited for next week's episode as we can jump into more so like truly our era of like when we really started playing and knowing a little bit more about like hero clicks at that point in time versus just kind of going back and picking this figure up because it was cool uh let's jump through a few community questions here we got a handful i think they're pretty fun we'll try to go over these uh, we'll do like a handful. What do you What do you think? Just a few to end this episode, and then we'll do a few more next week. There are dozens of us. Dozens. Uh, Will Holland asks, as you've talked about figures from Deadpool Weapon X, any sealed tips for pre-release? We did go over the entire set. We did talk about. It. I think there was a decent amount of sealed tips sprinkled throughout it, but you know, it's like I don't know the classic sealed stuff, right? Make sure you. Try to prioritize having an outwit, a prob, a leadership. If you get so lucky, like make sure you know that those powers have uh, a lot more value in sealed than almost. I mean, they always have value, but in sealed, they have a ton of value. Play every prob, um, and then don't get tired of saying blades, claws, fangs, because you're gonna say blades, claws, fangs about a million times uh, yeah. playing in sealed this, of this set. In this set specifically. Yeah, I I think uh, honestly, like in a set like this, yeah, being able to re-roll an attack roll is high on like my my things. Um, I don't remember that many rollouts, but yeah, outwit is always if you don't have to worry about shape change or if you don't have to worry about super senses. Like I personally always get rid of super senses if they hit the shape change, yeah. then I can at least target someone else. Uh, if they hit super senses, then it's like, that's just, you know, you rolled the attack and that was the best you could have done. And like, yeah, it's over. Um, so like, I love an outwit and sealed and then yeah, probs, um, sealed tip. Yeah. I mean, I mean, sealed, that's the same sealed tips I'd say for anything. It's just have your, have an outwit, have a prob, have a perplex, have like as many support powers as you can with like one solid attacker at yeah. least. And then like, should do okay just kind of depends i mean 
obviously if like they pulled quote unquote the nuts then like that's what they got and that's what you got so yeah i just like went through really quick there's like 30 figures in in this set plus that have like blades somewhere on their dial just rough estimate and so many start it there's so much blades cost in this set oh it's, it's ridiculous uh, Wesley R. asks if we can shout out the upcoming event for the next few months, including the Midwest Regional Championship in Indiana. Uh, go ahead. Check that out. Check out the Midwest Regional in Indiana. They just uploaded some of their prizing. Find them on Facebook. I believe uh, Modern or their Friday event, one of the two, they're giving away like two Chase Boosters to first, the Chase Boosters second for Deadpool Weapon X. So pretty fun prizing. There's going to be a Modern. I think there's going to be a sealed team event. And then I believe top 16 is getting broadswords so pretty fun look for that midwest regional event in indiana uh, brad asks what is a figure from wwe that you would pair up with the op kit madison what is one figure not from wwe that you would pair up with her so really quickly brad brought this up and i must have totally glanced over this madison i did not realize she did this or at least in my brain i was just like eh, that sucks whatever but she has a special perplex, which is perplex when Madison uses it, immediately give a friendly character an action token. If you can't, this use of perplex has no effect. That is so good. For those of you that don't know how WWE works, every WWE character has a signature move that they have to have at least one action token be on. If they have a single action token, so I think I think my number one pick for this is Stone Cold Steve Austin from the starter set. I think that, uh, crack full open speed a charge. Uh, well, no full speed charge. Oh, uh, this the, is the, the, the crack open vulture. A, yeah, uh, yeah. Six the six pack of stunners. Okay. So I think the idea is that if someone foolishly, oh, utter buffoon, moves up on their first turn because they only see the silly little boy has flurry for a speed value. Those goofy goobers. Uh, you can perplex them up. You can move them out. Slash. Uh, what I did, I actually played a celebrity team a few weeks ago. I would. Either Donnie Blaze them for extra movement, like full speed move Stone Cold Steve Austin, and then move Donnie Blaze adjacent to him, move him and place him another four squares away. They place him back one square, right? For like 11 ish squares of movement, you could perplex up your, his speed with Madison. Uh, you could do all sorts of crazy stuff. But yeah, I think this is like probably my number one choice just because I played him recently to like actually crack open the stunners just right away. I think it's really cool. Yeah. My top choice would be Eddie Guerrero. I think that's Goat. that triple flurry. I mean, if you can equip him with something, if you can get him adjacent, I love the blood X on Eddie, uh, exploit battle fury, steel energy, and then being able to do three attacks. He doesn't have like the craziest combat values, but obviously like, you can boost those if you really want to, if you really need to, uh, it doesn't take a ton of prep, the figure I've had the most benefit from is definitely Shawn Michaels, I think. Okay. But, like, his special, the thing is, like, you need, you actually have to wait, like, three, two to three turns to, like, shoot yeah. up the band. Or, like, two to three turns where he doesn't do anything at all, except, like, maybe perplex. Yeah, and, his nimble sidestep perplex, that's it. Yeah, and then you, you can unleash him, and, like, once you unleash him like it is good it is you know yeah but what like he does a 14 oh. for four or something like that like he's he's solid once you actually use his special he is that one is just so fun i love the idea of a figure that you have to charge up and then they get to do their one big thing it's so fun brad also asks what are some figures that should be banned in silver age for pulp Brad, I got no idea uh, that should be banned in Silver Age or Pulp. I think Pulp being Highlander helps itself out a lot. Old school figures that made Pulp Highlander were like Medusa, Giant Girl. Oh, yeah. But since Pulp is Highlander, since you can only ever play one figure of it, uh, that's fine. I think Medusa and Giant Girl are fine. I can't, I really can't think of any crazy problematic figures. Um, it depends on whether or not you are allowing yeah. WWE in pulp. Assuming Honestly, Highlander, I don't think it should be allowed. It's way too good. Um, you don't have to worry about like Wendigo Swarm. If, if you know, if we're assuming oof, Highlander. Wendigo might a be a pick, of, but there's only one. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you can just kind of ignore. Um, 
I mean, I guess, like, I'd keep an eye on, like, the, the regular pulp stuff. So, like, Sinister, uh, Sinister Necron, um, Blackheart, or, like, the, the things that, like, have classically done really, really well in pulp over the last yeah. like, couple months. Uh, those are things that I would... I would ban them if I was running like a local tournament, just because so, I don't want to see the same stuff that's been winning. But like, I, as far as like a big pulp tournament, I don't even know if they need to be banned. I think that like every set we get new and exciting pulp pieces. So I'm pretty pro a Blackheart Sinister, at the very least, Blackheart Sinister ban, in my opinion, uh, just because of how nuts to butts blackheart makes everything so but yeah it's kind of up to you brad it's your event but those are just some few things that we uh said to look out for we'll do this last one and we'll end it here with this little brad flurry of questions is simeon waiting to plan his vacation time after the fourth of july is over for any possible firework accidents <laughs> uh i actually i do not have any planned vacation time right now um what's funny i mean haha funny um okay what's what's uh, a, a fun anec- anecdote my current newest employee is negative 40 pto hours right now negative 40 which is a full week of pto that he has already used and does not accrue so like he he accrues two hours every full week that he works so it will take him the rest of the year to build back up to the Dude. negative that he has accrued. Uh, and that's just from, like, upset tummy kind of, like, stuff. Oh, I see. Got a little, got a little too sick but every yeah. once in a while. That's the way it goes. It sucks. For anyone that, like, this is, like, one of your your times listening and you don't know, like, the full full backstory. Uh, last 4th of July, one of my coworkers took off basically a full month from, like, June ish something all the way up until July 5th is what he took off. And then on July 5th, he decided, you know what? July 4th wasn't good enough. I'm going to set off some more fireworks. He got mad at his uh, neighbor, decided to try and shoot a rocket, a homemade rocket at his neighbor, blew off his hands. And uh, that was, well, that was. A whole July 4th ago at this point, he has not been back to work, and he probably will never be back to work. That is t- uh, so tough. Every time I scene. hear that or think about it, I'm just like, oh, yeah. Oh, it's so bad. No, it, it was when I first heard about it, like we didn't know the full situation because uh, his friend, like his in real life, like friend, not just work friend was like, yeah, his hands are gone. And I was like, Wow, that's crazy. Oh. And then it was like, oh, like one hand's gone. The other's like kind of okay. And then like finally it was like both eardrums exploded on impact. Uh, one hand is Ugh. like three out of the – it's it's like two and a third out of the five fingers belong to one hand. The other hand's mostly fine. But, yeah, just not a good thing. Don't play with fireworks, kids. It's uh, dangerous, especially if they're homemade, especially if you are intoxicated and uh, trying to attack somebody with them. I don't know. There's there's a lot of ways that I could say don't do these things, but I, I feel like an average person would just be like, huh, this is a bad idea. I'm not going to do it. So I don't feel like any of our listeners have to be chastised or educated about that particular aspect i think they will just be comforted in the fact that they probably won't lose any digits anytime soon because they're smart unlike my coworker was oofta Uh, and we'll finish it off there pretty good episode we got to go down memory lane a little bit both the good the bad and the otherwise Guys, write us in if you have any fond memories of any of these sets. Did we miss over a favorite character of yours from any of the sets that we talked about? Is there anyone you uh, 
thought, oh, you guys liked that character, that character's horrible, or something like that, let us know. Send us an email at dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com talking about some of your favorite characters or some of your favorite sets, uh, and when you know, when are in and around the era that you were playing Hero Clicks or started playing, we love to know that stuff. And then if you want to support Dial H for Hero Clicks, you can go ahead and join our Patreon, Dial H for Hero Clicks podcast, uh, patreon.com, or Dial H podcast, patreon.com, one of those, something like that make sure to check it out and support the show and we really appreciate that yes and if you are trying to pick up some hero clicks well you can find the latest hero clicks singles and sealed products at coolstuffinc.com or if you use code dial five you'll save five percent off you know uh deadpool weapon x is coming out pretty soon so if you want the singles from that just wait until they post them or you can buy the sealed products either way Dial H, or dial, dial 5. There we go. H. Just dial 5. That'll save you 5% off when you order from them. Uh, make sure you use that regardless of uh, what you're getting so that you at least save that 5% regardless of your other discounts. Or if you want to go direct to the source, you can go to shop.wizkids.com where if you use the code dial H10, you'll save 10% off most of your orders, not all of them, not pre-orders, not specialty figures or iconics, but some of the things that you buy will, you know, they'll fil- filter out through there. So uh, you might at least try Dial H10. No reason not to. Absolutely. Like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> not going there. That's how it works. Over okay, yeah, six over people there. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of this case uh, doesn't matter at all. I'm from 